a quick essential review of complex polar form right this second. A uh, couple of important things that you need to know. Uh, one is, is if we took, let's say I did negative 5 plus 5i, okay? And I wanted to figure out what the modulus and what the argument is. So go ahead and try that. So uh, if you look at this, we would be interested in r square root of x squared plus y squared, and we'd be interested in theta, the inverse tangent of y over x, right? Uh, then this is no problem. You're just going to get the square root of negative 5 squared plus 5 squared, which is the square root of 50. Now, let's simple, break it down the way IB would like to see it. That's the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And so what's the simplified radical way of showing that? 5 root of 2. Now, how IB would do this is they would say, put it in A root of B form. That's how, that's how they uh, show the expectation of being able to break these down into radicals. So uh, just throw that out at you a little bit. Then inverse tangent. So what we'll do is the inverse tangent of 5, right? This is x, or this is x and this is y. 5 over negative 5. So the inverse tangent of negative 1 is negative pi over 4. That's wrong. Right? It's wrong. So the hardest part about this chapter, I think, is having to realize that you're only going to use your calculator and inverses to get you an answer in quadrant 1 and 4. This is the inverse tangent of y over x if it's positive. This is the inverse tangent of y over x if it's negative. Okay, But sometimes if you plot like this one, negative 5, 5, we're right here, aren't we? This is where we want to be. But if I do this, I am going to get negative pi over 4. So wh what do we do to get you back up here. What are we going to do? Add pi. So that's the big takeaway from yesterday. So this is going to be negative pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 4, which you can see visually is just 3 pi over 4. That is the theta. The correct theta. 3 pi over 4. Okay? So now, um, formula-wise, theta is equal to inverse tangent of y over x plus pi. And then this one down here is inverse. This is quadrant 2, and this is quadrant 3. This will be inverse tangent of y over x. And then you're going to be up here. You're going to have to subtract pi. These angles will never get bigger than pi and never get smaller than negative pi. That's the tricky part, too, for this. But it's not that bad. Okay, so that's doing that. So what we did that for is so that now when you wrote negative 5 plus 5i, this is in what we call rectangular form. Now I'm rewriting this as r, 5 square root of 2, cis 3 pi over 4. And this is what we call the polar form, r, cis, theta. Both of these are complex numbers. This is rectangular, and this is my polar. Yeah, yeah, cis is a shortcut. So whenever you see r cis theta, it's saying r times the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. It's a shortcut. Oh, great question. Uh, we found out yesterday that 
you drew a triangle, you took a point up here, x, y, right? That triangle would be x, y, and we're going to call this r, and this theta, right? The cosine of theta is x over r. The sine of theta is y over r. So far, so good? So then what you'll do is r times cosine is your x. r times the sine, which is cross-multiplying, is your y. Okay? This is the, um, this if we're going x plus y i, is then going to be x, r cosine theta, plus i, times y, r sine theta, and you see how I factor out the r? It's all because this is still y, this is still x, and this is the i. Sis.